Welcome back to Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for all your solar needs. And this is part two of a series of videos that we'll be doing uh, for those who are doing a do-it-yourself uh, off-grid system. Our, our first part was determining your, your size of energy needed. So in other words, uh, we had to do a calculation of the appliances and power uh, requirements that you were going to use. Now, once we got accomplished that, and we found out how much energy we're going to use on a on a daily or weekly, monthly basis. The next step will be to uh, size the right size battery. So you need batteries in order to store that energy that you're gonna be using. Because then what's gonna happen here is that um, in an off-grid system, you've gotta be aware that uh, when the sun is down or it's cloudy days or overcast or snow or weather, you will need to have a battery bank to store the energy so that you're gonna use that. Remember, it's gotta be the same kind of energy you're gonna be using your appliances to when you'd have some uh, days of autonomy. In other words, it's gonna be you no know, sun, uh, snow, just like I said before, it's gonna be cloudy and you won't have any sunlight. So what we do is we take that calculation to have and we know what we want. So we need to be able to store that. And we have to store it in such a way that we can have at least a couple days of running power without solar. So that means we have to develop our battery bank. Now, depending on the system you want, we have there's 12 volt, 24 and 48 volt systems that you can use. There are several types of batteries that are most common in uh, um, off-grid systems. For instance, we have lithium batteries, AGM or sealed batteries, and down here we have flooded batteries. These are, these are 12 volts and these are lithium. Now there are some pros and cons to both. That being said, that the uh, most common used and easiest to work with are going to be kind of 50-50. A lot of folks for small projects that require like cabins, campers, RVs, what have you, usually try to stick to 12 volt systems or some people want to go to a 24 volt systems. AGMs are lead acid batteries. These are both considered lead acid, just different styles. The lead acid batteries are easy to work with, more plentiful, and usually don't cost as much as they say a lithium counterpart would be. That being said, there are some downsides to it. First of all, that the lead acid batteries don't usually last nearly as long as lithiums. Also, that you can only run these down, these types of batteries down to like 50% of their overall capacity. Constantly running them past that can eventually damage the battery and shorten its life. Keeping that in mind, that you'll have to um, have more maintenance on these types of batteries. You gotta watch them more. Flooded batteries such as these will need more maintenance, uh, adding water, doing some sort of equalizations required. Sealed batteries like this is an AGM, which is called a absorbed glass mat, doesn't require that kind of equalization or that sort of maintenance, but you do have to keep an eye on it. Now, lithiums, on the other hand, such as this power-up lithium battery, these are much more expensive. However, what you pay for is quite a bit of technology. These particular batteries, and most lithium batteries for that matter, lithium iron phosphates, those are the safest ones to use for the mere fact that they are, they are safer. They won't burn to catch fire or anything like that. Older batteries would. These particular ones don't have that feature, thank goodness, and are much more safer for use in uh, habitable areas. The thing about lithium batteries is that you can run them down pretty much 90 to 80% of their capacity, and that way you can bring them back up without any damage or likely of uh, ruining the battery's capacity storage. The other thing is that with these batteries, they also have self-maintaining systems in it, usually what they call a, a BMS. The BMS here is what monitors and manages the cells that are inside so that you don't have to do so. Now, the downside of a lot of that is that you can't put these batteries, uh, majority of them, you can't put them in series. It can only be put in parallel. Putting things in parallel also helps you expand your storage. For instance, this is a 48 volt battery bank. If we added another one in parallel, we still have 48 volts. That means that we'll have 48 volts at over 200 amp hours. 100 amp hours and a secondary is 100 amp hours. Thus, you have a lot more capacity, a lot more storage. With lead acid batteries such as these, they are simpler to configure. For the mere fact that you can get like two of these um, AGM, these are 12 volt batteries. You put two of these in series, you will have 24 volts. And you will also have a higher bank capacity. The bank capacity of each of these batteries is 115 volts. 
That means if you put two together, you'll have uh, 230 volts, and so on and so forth. You can also put two banks together in parallel, so they're a lot more customizable. Unlike their uh, lithium brethren, where just putting them in parallel is about the most you can do with that. There are some on the market that you can put in series, but most of the ones for consumers that just want to have battery banks, you can get them in various sizes, 12, 24, 36, that's not very common. Mostly the 48s are the most common, and this is what most people use for their DIY storage. The next step is to figure out, okay, well, I got my usage, I decided on what kind of batteries I'm gonna use. Next thing you wanna do is, well, how much battery do I need? Well, that's gonna be dependent upon what your requirements were. Remember when we checked our uh, appliances and see how much water we're gonna use for the day? We need to have special calculations for that. And it's not that really that hard. You just gotta keep in mind that when you have uh, kilowatt or watt hours that you're gonna be using your appliances and your devices, you'll need to have something that's comparable to putting out that same amount of energy and be able to store it. And you need to make sure you can store it for maybe up to three days. That's usually the, the, the rough estimate of what uh, a battery should be hold for you should you be out of power for those times. For three days is typically what they go for. Okay, so keep in mind that when you do decide what battery to use, the storage medium is gonna change a little bit. That means lithiums and lead acids are going to be able to uh, have different qualities when it comes to what you want to storage for the same amount of energy that you want to use. For instance, a 4.8 kilowatt hour um, system requires a 260 amp hour 48 volt lithium. It's not too bad. Now for a 20 kilowatt system, it's a 415 amp hour for a 48 volt sealed battery. So you can see where your uh, capacity goes up. And that's only because it needs to have more for this as compared to this. That's why lithiums are usually preferred because you don't need as many to run as much because of that fact that you can run them down a lot lower than you can say any lead acid. Lead acid batteries, you remember, the power has to be only down to 50%, which means you pretty much have to double up on the battery capacity in order to achieve the same function as if it was on a lithium that can use up up to 90% of its capacity. So keep that in mind when deciding what kind of energy you want to store and how much capacity or how much of the chemistry that you want to use. Okay, so once we've determined that we have decided on the battery, that we're going to put this all storage together, we decided on how much, uh, sp how much voltage we're going to use. Do we want a 12 volt system? Do we want a 24 volt system? Or are we, doing, are we going to run a 48 volt system? 48 volt systems are for usually larger capacity um, houses and and uh, larger projects. 24 is pretty much your middle of the road. Storage capacity voltage, great for like um, small cabins, campers, and what have you. Smaller 12 volt systems are great for like RVs and whatnot. And they do come in various sizes, 12 volts. Even your lithiums come in a variety of sizes. Lead acids are basically in 12 to six volts. So you'll have to configure them in series and in parallel as we discussed earlier to make sure you get the right size you want. So keep in mind, when you do decide to get yourself some batteries to store all your energy needs, also be considered of where you live. What's your environment like? In colder climates, batteries will behave differently than if they're in a hotter climate. For instance, up north where it gets freezing, you have to be careful. They will perform less in colder climates. In warmer and more hotter climates, batteries will perform a little bit higher. But because of the heat, you also have to be careful, be wary of overheating the batteries. You don't want to do that because then it just ruins their efficiency and shortens their life. So just keep in mind that at Santan Solar, we have a variety like um, Big Battery. That's one of the favorite brands that we do carry. Very simple, easy to use batteries. We have Outback, lead acid AGM batteries. Those are great batteries too. Easy to manipulate, easy to configure. We also have some power-ups. This is a power-up battery. It, these are great. These are a recent uh, acquisition for us and they've been, they've been working really great. Easy to customizable, lots of control, and you can do a lot with these. You can stack them up, easy to control. They have everything set up for you. Also, we do have some GrowWatt batteries that are out there. So if you have a GrowWatt system and you wanna use GrowWatt batteries, we do have those that are compatible with those units. Also, with, um, on a limited time right now, we do have some Tesla Powerwalls. These Tesla Powerwalls are in limited supply, and you should go to our uh, site, our website, and get a quote for how much they are, and that way you'll know what the availability we do have. 
again, check us out on our Santan uh, Solar website. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call here at Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for your solar needs. Thank you.